What's going on guys, Billy here, and welcome back to the third episode of Drone Flight School. In today's episode, we'll be going over all 12 of DJI's intelligent flight modes. Flying a drone is no easy task. There are many certain things that you need to do at the same time, such as control the altitude, make sure you don't run into anything, set your speed, control the gimbal, etc, etc. But with intelligent flight modes, DJI looks to make that a little bit easier for you. Before we begin, there are a few points that I want to hit. The first one being the upload date. I am uploading this on February 5th, 2017. So if you are watching this in the future, it may be possible that DJI has added new intelligent flight modes to their drones. And it might not be listed in this video, but if they do come out with a new one in the future, I'll make sure to have a whole entire episode dedicated to just that intelligent flight mode. The next thing that I want to mention is that the drone I'm using for this video is the Phantom 4 Pro. The reason I'm saying this is because if you have a drone such as the Phantom 4 or the Phantom 3 series, you might not have all 12 of these intelligent flight modes, but there are a few of these located on your drone. I also want to mention that the firmware version I'm on for my Phantom 4 Pro is version 1.1.410, so some of these menus may look different throughout some coming updates from DJI. Also, I'm going to throw some timestamps down in the description for you guys, so if you're here for just a certain intelligent flight mode, you can find it easily throughout the video. Now just to add a little bit of structure to this video, basically I'll go one by one through each of the intelligent flight modes, and then within each intelligent flight mode, I'll go through an explanation, a walkthrough, and some sample clips. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. First up we have our normal flight mode and there's nothing really special about this. This isn't really considered an intelligent flight mode, but I figured I'd throw it on here just because it is part of the list. When you're in normal mode, you're pretty much required to control every aspect of flight. The drone is not going to be flying itself. As I said, this really isn't considered an intelligent flight mode, but because it's on the list, I figured I'd throw it in there. Whenever you're finished flying in your intelligent flight modes, you always want to make sure you flip back into normal mode. Next up we've got draw and this allows you to draw a line along the screen that the drone can follow. The first thing we'll notice when we're in this intelligent flight mode is that it actually doesn't work when the camera is looking straight ahead. You're going to want to make sure that it's pointed downwards for it to work properly. Once the camera is pointed appropriately, we can go ahead and draw the path we'd like our drone to fly along. After our line is drawn, we can choose between two different heading modes, forward and free, and we can also choose the speed that we want to fly at. Once we hit go, the drone takes off and goes towards its destination point. Now we chose forward as our heading mode and we'll notice that we actually cannot deviate off of the path. Even when we look right and left, it won't let us go anywhere. Basically, it's just going to fly straight to its destination and we're only allowed to look up or down with the camera. If instead we choose free, we're now able to spin the drone around and look wherever we would like. And we can also pitch the gimbal up or down. Now there is one thing that I need to warn you about. When you are in free mode, obstacle avoidance is disabled. So make sure that there's no trees along the path that you're flying along. Once the drone has made it to its destination, it will stop and hover in place and alert us in the top left corner that we have arrived at our destination. Although I'm just messing around in this clip, it is cool how I can spin the drone around and it still stays on the same path that I've drawn. Next up we've got Gesture, and this allows you to get the drone's attention by waving your arms in the air, and then take a picture by putting your two hands together to make a square. Using this intelligent flight mode will get rid of the controller in your picture, which can sometimes be obtrusive. The first thing that we need to do is wave our arms around to get the attention of the drone, and let it know that we're the subject that it needs to track. Next, we're going to have to take our arms and put it into the form of a picture or a square. Now the first time it doesn't end up working for me, but I do try it again, and it ended up working pretty well. After my first failed attempt, and then my first good attempt, I tried again, and I ended up taking another picture. So it really is hit or miss, you need to make sure that you do this a couple of times just so that you get a good picture. Here is the sample picture that I took using gesture mode. It really doesn't come out any differently than taking a picture with the actual controller. Of course, the Phantom 4 Pro's camera quality is amazing. But again, it'll allow you to take a picture of yourself or of your friends without having the remote in the picture. As you can see, I have it sitting at my feet, so it does look kind of weird. But if you saw this picture and didn't see any remote, people would be wondering how you got the picture. Now, I don't find myself using this feature all that much, but I do think it was implemented for people who are not that serious into flying drones. It really is a good idea, and especially for someone who likes to post pictures on social media, you'll definitely get a lot of likes. The next intelligent flight mode that we have is Active Track, and this will allow you to select an object or person on the screen and have the drone automatically follow it by itself. This intelligent flight mode is great for someone who wants to film themselves but doesn't have another set of hands, so therefore you can set the controller down and just have the drone follow you all by itself. Our first step is to draw a box over the object that we want to track. In my case, it's just my body. 
And before we hit go, we have a few certain options that we can choose from. So first of all, we have trace, which will follow behind or in front of the subject. Then we have profile, which will follow alongside, so basically to the side of a subject. And then finally, we have spotlight, which will keep the camera trained on the subject, but will fly pretty much anywhere that it wants to. Once we choose which active track mode we want to use, we'll click go, and from there the drone will start following us. Now as you can see, when we hit trace, we have this slider that goes across the screen. If we slide it towards the left or towards the right, this will choose which way the drone will orbit around us. Although this is a fairly good way to choose which way you want your drone to orbit, I do find it hard to get the exact value that I want. So as you can see, when I'm trying to get it to zero right now, I'm kind of struggling to find that exact spot. With that being said, I do wish that there was an easier way to just choose the select value that I want to use. Now the cool thing about active track mode is that even if I put the controller down, the drone will continue to follow me. This isn't like follow me mode where you have to actually hold the remote in order for the drone to follow your subject. In this trace mode, we're also able to control the drone using the sticks on our RC remote, so we can orbit manually as well as change the altitude of the drone. The shot that you get while using active track mode looks super clean, and honestly I am really impressed with how stable the drone stays when it's following you. Now as far as profile mode is concerned, I usually only like to use this on my Phantom 4 Pro as it has the sensors along the back, the sides, and pretty much all the way around the drone. I usually use it on my Mavic Pro very sparingly, just because it only has two sets of sensors along the front and along the bottom. Next up we've got Tabfly, and this is pretty straightforward, the name pretty much says it all. You can tap the screen in order for the drone to fly forwards or backwards. Once we enter the Tabfly Intelligent Flight Mode, we can choose between forward, backwards, and free. Now forward and backwards is fairly self-explanatory, but when we hit free, we can fly forwards, and then from there we'll fly along that route that we've chosen, and then we can rotate the drone, just like in the Draw Intelligent Flight Mode. At the bottom, if we choose Advanced Settings, we can see that we can turn the AR route on or off, and I'll explain more about this in just a little bit. Once we head back to the main screen, you'll notice that we have a slider along the side that we can choose to set the speed of our drone. From there, we can click go and our drone is on its way. From here, we can change the direction that our drone is flying, such as going up or down, or even going left and right. So basically, the drone will fly forwards for us, and then from there, we can choose which way the drone will go. If we were to choose backwards, we would still do the same thing as when we were flying forwards. Basically, hit the screen and then click go, and from there, we'll start to fly backwards. When flying backwards, we still get the same features that we do when flying forwards. We can choose to go up or down or even side to side. If we deselect the AR route button in the advanced settings of the tap fly intelligent flight mode, we'll notice that now when we hit the middle of the screen and click go that there are no green triangles pointing us in the direction our drone will be flying. I usually will have this setting turned off as it does get quite annoying seeing the green triangles right in the middle of the screen. Next up we've got tripod mode and this will allow you to shoot much smoother video, but this comes at the cost of a decrease in speed. Although the speed decrease is pretty drastic, I find myself using it a lot as the drone is much more stable and I can get much smoother shots. Using this intelligent flight mode is pretty straightforward. As you'll notice once we hit tripod mode, there's pretty much no other settings that we can change, it just automatically is enabled. Our max speed is pretty much locked at 4 miles an hour going all the way around, so whether you want to go up, down, forward, straight, sideways, you can only go 4 miles an hour whichever direction you want to go. Although this does seem like a very big decrease in speed, it really does help when you're trying to get a nice smooth shot. For example, achieving this nice, smooth, stable shot would have been really hard when flying in the P or standard mode on my drone. I had a really tight corridor here, the house was in front of me, and there were trees behind me as well, so using the tripod mode really was helpful as I could slow down my speed. Now I'd have to say that tripod mode is probably my favorite intelligent flight mode on the Phantom 4 Pro as well as the Mavic Pro. I find myself using it almost every single time that I'm out flying my drone as it does help you A, get nice stable shots and also land your drone. Sometimes I find myself landing in a tight space such as on top of a picnic table or on top of a small landing pad and this helps me get right on the dot. Another good thing about tripod mode is that the sideways optical avoidance sensors on the Phantom 4 Pro are enabled. As we know when we're flying around in standard mode those are actually turned off so it's nice that in tripod mode we can finally take advantage of them. Coming up next we've got terrain follow and this will allow the drone to automatically adjust its altitude depending on the terrain underneath of it as you fly the drone forward. This intelligent flight mode is fairly easy to use. First of all, we need to set our desired altitude, and then we can click apply. From there, we can simply start flying straight forward, and the drone will follow the terrain underneath of it, slightly adjusting its altitude so it doesn't run into the ground. In an effort to save time, I've sped up the incline going up to the top of the hill, and we can see that the height is in fact increasing on its own. Once we start going down the hill, we'll notice that the altitude stays exactly the same, so therefore, terrain follow only works when going uphill. 
I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't really like this intelligent flight mode. Really, it's just alleviating the fact that I need to push the left stick upwards to follow the terrain. And although it's pretty cool that it does it by itself, again, I don't personally use it and I don't think that many other people use it as well. I think that it might be more useful if it was able to follow the terrain going downwards, and I hope that that's possibly a software update that comes within the near future from DJI. Next up we've got point of interest, and this will allow you to choose a point that you'd like the drone to automatically orbit around continuously. You can typically get a shot like this when using just the sticks, but it is a lot easier when using the intelligent flight mode. The first thing that we notice when we click on the point of interest intelligent flight mode is this set of controls, and this is something that you want to take note of before we start. The first thing we need to do when using this intelligent flight mode is to choose a point of interest. We can simply hover over the top of it and then hit record POI. Next we need to choose the radius and we can do this by pulling the right stick backwards and then hitting apply. We also want to make sure that our return to home altitude is set at a perfect level so we don't run into anything if the drone for some reason disconnects. Once we hit apply, we'll notice that the drone starts its orbit around the point of interest. From the screen, we can see the radius and the altitude, and we can also change which direction we want the drone to orbit. From here, with this slider, we can also choose how fast we want the drone to orbit. Underneath of the slider, we can see how long each loop will take. So as we can see, I was going slower, and it said it was going to take around 4 minutes, but now when I speed it up, it's going to only take 30 seconds to do a complete loop. We can also choose to pause the orbit if we so wish to. Finally, at the bottom, we have three more buttons. First of all, we have Reset Heading, which will pretty much reset our point of interest. Next, we have Hide, which will hide this little point of interest tab along the right side. And then finally, we have Exit, which will exit the Intelligent Flight Mode altogether. In this example, I'm doing the point of interest, but on a much bigger scale. Pretty much, I'm surveying this whole entire lot that my dad is building houses on. It was very helpful for him to look at, and also pretty cool for me to test out as this is one of the first time that I tried doing a point of interest. And as you can see, it's very smooth and very slow, but again, it looks nice and professional. And this is the drone flying itself, so that's also a bonus. Next up we've got follow me, and this will allow the drone to automatically follow the subject. Now this has since been replaced by active track, honestly they're pretty much the same exact thing. And I'm not really sure why follow me is still on some of the newer drones, but again it is included on most drones such as the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4 series. Once we get inside of the follow me intelligent flight mode, we can hit apply when we're at the desired altitude, and from there start to walk. Now right now we'll see that the drone is following me with pretty much no problem whatsoever. I did have some trouble when the drone was a little bit too low. I think that you need to be anywhere above 35 or 36 feet for the follow me mode to actually work. Now you notice in a few seconds I drop the controller down to my side and the drone stops following me, and this is a huge problem. As for this to work, you pretty much need to be carrying the controller around. Now as I said, this has been since replaced by active track mode. Honestly, I don't know anyone who would use this over active track mode if you have some of the newer drones, because you have to be carrying the controller around with you, and there's really no time when I'm trying to have the drone follow me by itself that I want the controller to be on my person. I do realize that this is still on the DJI GO app for the Phantom 3 line of drones as they don't have active track, but I do wish that this was removed on some of the newer drones such as the Mavic Pro or the Phantom 4 Pro that really don't need it. With that being said, follow me mode does yield some pretty good results, but if you have some of the newer drones, active track is the way to go as you get a lot more features like profile or spotlight. Up next we've got waypoints and this allows the drone to automatically fly along selected waypoints that you choose yourself on the map. Before we get into this intelligent flight mode, I just want to warn you guys that when using this, I would always recommend staying up above the trees or anything that you might be able to crash into. To get things started, we need to click New Mission. If we have missions already saved, we can go under our favorite missions. The next step is to fly around and set our different waypoints. So what I'm going to do is fly around to the different areas that I want to actually set where my waypoints should be and hit the C1 button on the back of the controller. If you don't like where a certain waypoint is, you can hit C2 and that will remove it. Once all the waypoints have been set, we can click on the map in the bottom left corner to examine where they are and the distances in between them. If all the waypoints look good to you, you can go ahead and click done, and from there, we'll access some of the last settings that we need to choose before continuing. First of all, we can choose between adjustable heading, route linked heading, and free. I'll get more into that in just a little bit. Next, we have mission complete, so we can choose basically if we want the drone to hover when it's done going to all the waypoints, or return to home. For me, I usually like to hit return to home. And then finally, we can choose the speed at which our drone will fly. Finally, we'll choose our return to home altitude, and then from there, it'll upload the waypoints and begin its journey. If we selected route link heading, we'll notice that once the drone gets to a corner, it'll pretty much turn quickly so that the drone will always be facing forward. 
If we choose something like adjustable heading, we'll notice that the drone is a little bit more sluggish when it gets those waypoints to face forward. Now finally we have free and this pretty much acts like all of the other intelligent flight modes. Basically the drone will follow along the path towards the next waypoint and you can look around as much as you want. But be warned that the obstacle avoidance sensors will be turned off when you're in free. Next up we've got home lock and this allows the drone to take a straight path back and forth from the home point. Once we're in the home lock intelligent flight mode, we can click apply to begin. Now basically, once we hit apply, we can do one of two things. Go straight away from the home point or straight towards the home point. So right now, I'm looking sideways and when I pull downwards on the stick, it'll come right back to me. The orientation of the drone does not matter. If it's looking sideways, straight, backwards, really any way, it's going to come right back to the home point when you pull down on the right stick. Now if we push forward on the right stick, it will go straight away from us. Again, it doesn't matter about the orientation. Right now I'm looking sideways, pushing forward on the right stick, and it's going straight away from the home point. Even as we're flying and spinning the drone around, we'll notice that it doesn't matter. It will still continue on that course towards the home point. And finally, coming in with our last intelligent flight mode, we have course lock, and this pretty much acts just like home lock, except you can now set the course or the actual line that the drone will fly along. To start things off, we need to choose which way we want our course line to be, point our drone towards that way, and click apply. You'll notice that in the bottom left corner, a red line has appeared, and that is the course that we have just set. Now just like home lock, when we push forward on the right stick, the drone will move forward, and then from there, we can spin around, and it'll stay on the course. This gives you a lot more freedom when shooting, as with the home point, you're kind of limited to wherever your home point actually is, and sometimes that might be not good enough for your shot. To reset the line on the course lock, simply change which direction the drone is facing, and then click reset direction. From there, you'll notice that in the bottom left corner, the red line has changed accordingly. So guys, that about wraps this video up. I know it was fairly long, and I hope you guys did enjoy. I also hope you guys took something away from this, as I did work very hard on it. And I always do make my videos so that people can learn from them. But anyway, if you did like it, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe, as I do try to upload daily. Also leave a comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever about any of the Intelligent Flight modes. I know it was a lot to grasp, and I know it was a lot for me to kind of regurgitate to you guys. So if I did miss something, make sure to ask me, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But as I said, this video is coming to an end, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.